able to, we're, we have not really been through any strife in our country at all, really, compared to most countries, even compared to America, our closest neighbor. Like, at least they have been through, you know, civil war, they've been through world wars, they, you know, they, they know what it means to fight for your freedom, you know, more than Canadians do anyway. I think Americans are also, um, you know, it's a first world country, so you live in your little comfortable bubble. People are worried about, like, you know, what's Kim Kardashian wearing or what's, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, this yeah, is what yeah. takes up their life. The people like you and I who know what yeah. it's like, yeah. we don't have that luxury to be no. this, you know, ignorant. <laughs> is yeah. Ignorance yeah. is bliss, right? Yeah. Yeah. They get to be living in their comfortable bubbles and, and clueless about what's happening. Yeah. And, um, you know, we have a saying in... In Egyptian Arabic they say the person who has been bitten by a snake is now scared of a rope yeah so I think that's kind of where you and I are like we've been bitten by snakes so yeah. when we see Islam trying to come into our schools or into our government or pushing for uh, to change our laws and stuff like that like Muslim people coming yeah, in and yeah. doing these things we're very like, no, 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 no. I know yeah. where this leads. Yeah, exactly. I've seen yeah. this before, and exactly. I know how quickly things yeah. can change. And so we're reacting yeah. because we know. But yeah. people who don't know, yeah. they're like, what's the big deal? Yeah. So what? And it's, it's a few like, prayers in the school, you know? Yeah. Why are you upset? Or in the, we were in the hospital one time, and they said, you can't wear, uh, wear clothes above the knee because it's a family area here. Where? What, what country? Denmark. Denmark. Yeah, in the hospital, and was like, this is summer, and we are hot, and we are going to wear shorts and skirts, and you have to live with it. And oh. they were like, no, we were no, we have this rule because there are a lot of families, and it was a, it was the Muslim thing. It was because there were a lot of Muslims. Oh, see, this is unacceptable. In that, like, in that uh, division. Yeah. Yeah. This is, that's completely unacceptable. Yeah, but like, this is the this is this is exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Like when you have your values, we have fought. Women have fought for so long to be yeah. able to wear what we want to wear yeah. in the Western world, and we have won that fight. Yeah, it was also men. I mean, it was both uh, sure. sexes, but still, it's but like still over, it's our freedom of like you can't you can't tell people I'm not what to Iran. wear. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. I'm not in Iran. I'm not in Saudi yeah. Arabia. You can't tell me what to wear. But but we're going backwards in the Western world. We're going backwards because yeah. we're allowing ourselves to be bullied into yeah. losing our values. Exactly. The People have died for, for us to have these freedoms, yeah. and now we're going to give them up. Yeah, like in, in Canada, we spent maybe 30, 40 years pushing Christianity out of the public secular schools, and now we're opening the door for Islam and saying, "Yeah, yeah, sure, come have your Friday prayers. It's no problem. Yeah. You know, you want to pray during the school day. Here's a prayer room." And yeah. why do we push out Christian prayers and now we're allowing yeah. a Muslim? I don't know whether you saw it in Sweden, they had this uh, Islamic school where they put the kids uh, who, are, who are girls behind the bus when they, oh. whenever they were going somewhere and the boys in front and we were like, I didn't know that. What is happening? <laughs> so yeah. instead of getting the, that Muslim side of the world to progress, yeah. On the West, we are regressing. Yeah, exactly. We're going to go backwards instead. Yeah. So they're winning here and there. Yeah. They're winning everywhere, really. The only thing that we could be, like, which is, like, that's terrible as well, because that that's also one of the reasons why they're at war with each other, but it, they're, they're not united, at least. Mm -hmm. They're divide, divided. It's yeah. not, like, one... Yeah, uh, Islamic force. But they're yeah. united against the non-Muslims. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's the true. only thing. That's true. Once they get rid of all of us, then they, they'll fight with yeah, but themselves. But but in the Sunni Shia war, they they're already fighting each other, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even like ISIS and Al Qaeda have fought each other because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're not the same organization. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it, it it's so clear if you really it's clear that they can't tolerate even. No, when even you're the Salafi and, and yeah, yeah. you're like, mm -hmm. you're both jihadists, but mm -hmm. one have one leader and one have another, mm -hmm. you will kill each other, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You believe in the exact same thing. Yeah. yeah. So, but they are not united, and also we are not united. Yeah. Because even within liberals, we have the far left liberals that fight against the, you know, the real liberals. 
Yeah. And they're the ones that are actually fighting with the, you know, the, the jihadis and the, and the Islamists, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, because and they're supporting, they're the ones that are supporting this yeah, gender segregation yeah. and the prayers in the secular schools. And and I, I think actually it's very important to say not just liberals versus conservatives or, or whatever, socialists or whatever you are. I think it's it, it's about being democratic. If you are a Democrat, you're you shouldn't. I mean, not Democrat like Democrat versus Republican in U.S. Mm-hmm. But like, mm-hmm. if you're if you are um like you're for human rights and democracy, yes. you should know that this is a problem. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, that's what we would definitely. That generally, that's who we would call yeah. liberals. Yeah, or yeah. people that are for human rights that yeah, are for. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, for equality and yeah. for democracy yeah. and all of these values yeah, yeah. And that we really strongly believe in. Um, but yeah, of course, it's a spectrum, right? Yeah, There's yeah. some people that are a little bit so far left, they're like, you know, yeah. communist. Yeah. People that are so far right, they're Nazis. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah what exactly. I mean? Yeah. But of course, not those people, then they're not for, you know, they're not democracy. Saying, yeah. Really. So, yeah, so yeah. we wouldn't consider yeah. them to be. Yeah, liberals. But could you tell me about your own story? How you you were born in Canada, or you were born? Yeah. So I was born and raised in Canada, but I was born. Uh, so my mom and my dad got divorced when I was very young. So by the time I was two years old, my dad wasn't even in our life anymore, and so my mom was all alone with three children, and. She grew up in a very secular um, family. Like they, they didn't. They were, they were Muslim, but not really. Like they weren't really religious. She was not practicing. She didn't really know much about the religion. Um, Did she cover? She didn't cover. No. Um, she didn't go to Islamic schools or even the mosque or anything. Yeah. But it's just sort of like it was kind of like a like an identity yeah. almost. Like if you've met Catholic people generally in America and Canada, they're like they go to church maybe once a year or something yeah. or for something special. But it's not. It's just like an identity. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So she grew up like that, but now she's in Canada and she's got three children and she's all alone and so she's looking for something to like a community or something to hold on to. So she went to the mosque because that's where there's going to, she's going to find other people that, that speak the same language as her or that have the same similar community. And she found an Egyptian man there. She's Egyptian. And he was already married and he already had three children, but he told her, I'll marry you also like concurrently. Cause you know, Muslim men can have up to four wives, but it, isn't that illegal in Canada? It is illegal, but he was legally only married to the first wife, so he didn't never legally married my mom. But Islamic. But Islamically, they were married, yeah. And um, he told her. But is that isn't that illegal? Well, they just. Yeah, they it's don't like do having anything. a wife and a girlfriend. Yeah, you know? they don't. Yeah, that's that's the problem. Yeah, because that's they true. don't they don't do anything about it. No. Oh. In fact, in Canada, it's very popular, too, that a man will marry four wives, and each one of them will go on social assistance. Oh. So then they're collecting that much money from the government. Because they're this one, sole, uh, because they're single? Because and, they're single with children. Yeah. So the three women are single with children, yeah, yeah. and they're collecting money from the government as single moms. Oh. And then the fourth one of them, he's married to her. Okay. And so then, yeah, so then he's collecting basically from the government to pay for yeah. all his wives and all his children. And yeah. they know it's happening yeah. to the extent of it's actually an issue where it's costing millions of dollars, but nobody's going to say or do anything because it's racist and Islamophobic and it's bigot and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And now you have so. a law for it, right? Now you, you can't even say it kind of Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we kind of, we have a law now it's called, uh, well, it's not a law, sorry. It's a motion, but a motion becomes a bill becomes a law. So as long as we can stop yeah, yeah. it from continuing, then we might be okay. But this yeah. is, it's indicative of how Canadians think, right? Yeah. So we have this motion that says you cannot, basically you cannot criticize Islam. So Islamophobia means, um, you know, means fear of Islam. Yeah. Islam wants most Canadians dead. Islam wants most Americans dead. Islam yeah. wants all non-believers dead. 
So it's not an irrational fear. It's a very rational fear. Yeah. So what the, the what the Canadians were that were fighting against it, and a lot of those Canadians were Muslim Canadians too, but people from yeah. Iran and from Pakistan and countries that have blasphemy laws. Yeah. They are saying no. We don't want this. Yeah. I'm Muslim and I don't want this because yeah. this is this is a blasphemy law in the making. And um, we came to Canada because we don't want this. Do you have do you have blasphemy laws in, in Canada? Well, we sort of do, um, but there it's sort of like a, it, I know that in was it in Dutch you had a, a guy that burned a Quran. Yeah. And then they brought up a law that was almost fifty years old that had never been used. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That's Denmark. That's Denmark. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Oh, that is where you're Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's that kind of thing. We have the blasphemy law on the books, but it doesn't get And used. actually, after the, they were going to remove it, mm. that law, and that and after the terror attack, two weeks after the terror attack, they said, oh, we can't, because if somebody burns down the Quran, we, we want to punish them. Yeah, yeah. So it only gets used strategically. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I grew up in a very um, conservative household, and my mom ended up marrying this man, so she was the second wife. And he told her, now you have to start wearing hijab. Now you have to start teaching your children how to pray. He, he started breaking all of our records because music is haram, like forbidden. Uh, everything is haram. No more riding your bike. No more swimming. No more playing with your non-Muslim friends. No more birthdays. Yeah. Nothing. How old were you then? I was between five and six years old. Yeah. So between kindergarten and Do you and remember it? Oh, yes. I remember it very much because it was like a shock. Yeah. I was happy, enjoying my life like a normal kid. I didn't even realize that I, I had never, my mom had never mentioned to me that we were Muslim. I was just living my life. And then all of a sudden it was, we have to start studying this book in some weird language. I didn't know Arabic. I didn't know how to read it. I didn't understand it. You didn't understand it either? No. no. I had to learn. All of this stuff was shoved down my throat to the point that I was fluent in in Arabic reading writing and speaking because we, it was just like every day yeah so we were yeah. learning it yeah and every day I had to memorize uh, from the Quran and uh, you know by nine years old they put a hijab on me did your mom regret any of it could you she did it not that she ever shared with me no she didn't even like mind that he, had, he had another wife no she is because in iranian like society it happens but it's so taboo so nobody talks about it mm -hmm. is that the same way uh well she actually didn't share it with us we didn't even know that you she didn't? was married to him oh you didn't i didn't even know until i was in college is when i found really? out that she was married to him this whole time i just thought he was Somebody oh, just a guy that like yeah. a close family friend. Uh, so it was kind of with. taboo as well. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I think I, I'm not really sure why they kept it a secret. You know, like I don't know. There were so many things. It, it's a mix of this things. This is a paradox. I mean, if you're proud of it, then yeah, yeah, you would like mm -hmm. tell the world. You know, mm -hmm. this is my family. I have mm -hmm. two wives, then everything is normal for mm -hmm. me, right? Yeah. Yeah, I try to, there's a lot of things in my life that I, I try to separate what is just my crazy, you know, experience and then what is this then. Yeah. So m most of the things that I try to talk about, everything that I talk about in my book is always connected to a Islam. Because everything that ever happened to me was connected to Islam. There's, yeah. my mom was a student at Al-Azhar University in Egypt, which is one of the most prestigious Islamic universities. Yeah. Anything that ever happened, she always had like an ayah or a hadith to show us why this is happening. So oh. there's a lot of things that happened in my life that were crazy, but I don't include them in my book and I don't talk about them because I don't want to mix yeah, the culture with yeah, religion. just my crazy life and then the religious stuff. Yeah, yeah. So there were. I don't know why she didn't tell us. I don't know why he didn't tell us. I don't know why they kept it a secret. I don't think that had anything to do with this. I think it's maybe culturally. I, just, it's, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe yeah. just for whatever reason they made that decision. Yeah. I think Islamically, you're technically supposed to even say you have to t say this is my wife. Yeah. 
you're not supposed to keep it a secret. So they actually did something against. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't understand why, you know, they don't, I'm not going to ever go to, children cannot question their parents. Why their parents do something. They just, this is the way it is. And you ask questions, then you get told to shut up. Right. Yeah. If you even, even, I don't even bother trying to ask questions because, um, I always would get in trouble when I was young. So I stopped asking. But anyway, so she was his second wife and, um, he changed our lives completely she would let him beat us up like she didn't ever stop him or react or she would even call him and be like the kids are being bad come the kids are not studying she would like if we tell tell us to study the Quran and if we didn't study it she would phone him and say you know she'd say I'm gonna phone him and he's gonna come and then he would you know he'd like tie our feet to the end of the bed and hit the bottom of our feet because that way the bruises wouldn't be shown. You know, nobody can see them when we go to school, right? Wow. And then eventually we ended up moving into his house, into his basement, and going to Islamic schools. And that's when I was, the hijab was put on me. Um, and um, it was just, a, just so much happened. I'll and go into it's, detail it's le- in my book. Just for, for the audience, yeah. it's legally to, like, in, in, in mainstream Islam, it's, it's common to beat, and it's it's legit, legitimized by Hadith and the Quran to hit hit your child. That's correct. And Especially if they're not, like, reading the Quran or yes. uh, doing their namaz. Yes, yeah. that's right. So that, is, so that is something that is, like you said, it is um, sanctioned in the Quran, or in the Hadith by Islam and when I was about 13 not in the years Quran old, as I said no, no not no, in the Quran no, 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 no. Yeah. when I was 13 years old but it doesn't matter it's hadith Sharia yeah. is yeah, yeah. And hadith. yeah when I was 13 years old I went to the um, social services and the police and I asked for help and I said how, how old I was thir- 12 or 13 years old because yeah. they he was like hanging me by my feet upside down in the garage and they would just like I remember passing out and not because you're crying so it's like mucus and tears but you're upside down and so you can't breathe and so I you know even though that's something I was used to because I've been beat up my whole life even I knew like this is a bit too much you know so um so when I went and I asked for help from our government, um, it went to court and... And you were still living with your parents? I was still living with them. Or with him and yeah, your mom? Yeah, yeah. They didn't, like... Well, my mom hated me so much. They didn't... No, no, the, the government didn't think to remove you no. from the house? No, this is what I asked. I said, can you please remove me from the house? And the government said, basically the judge said, this is, this is their cultural freedom so hitting your children is not against the law in Canada it's not no so corporal punishment is not against it's against the law for teachers to hit students but it's not against the law for parents to hit children really that's right and but they said that um, but that's torture I mean it's not like even hitting normal yeah hitting yeah not that it's normal but yeah but they said well, maybe it's not normal for Canadians, but it's normal for Arabs. It's normal for Egyptians. So we can't judge other people's cultures. If that's how they hit their children in their culture, then then that's how they hit their children in their culture. That's We, we can't tell them how to live their life. That's Canadians. So if basically what I heard as a child was if your parents were German or Scottish, or basically if you had white skin, then we wouldn't let your parents torture you, and we would take you from the home and they would be prosecuted. But because you come from a Middle Eastern... Has that changed, do you think? North African family... No, it has not changed because I've spoken to people recently who have also gone to child services and have tried to get support and have been told very similar things. One girl I was speaking to in Toronto went to her high school counselor 
which is the same thing that I did. It was my teacher. And her counselor told her, this isn't true. You're being racist. She said, you're making, you're making stereotypes about Muslim people I are think... regressive left, as Majid Nawaz calls them, right? Yeah, yeah. Like our most right-wing conservative, as you can imagine, in Canada, yeah. is probably still more liberal yeah. than Bernie Sanders. Oh, <laughs> you know perfect. what I mean? <laughs> like, uh, we're very, 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 That's... very left. Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, but then when these cases... They say it's cultural, they just leave. But when, when these cases, because what happened in Denmark was when these cases became public in the media, then the politicians had to answer for it, right? Yeah. Because when, like, you were telling tough. your story now, would that impact what the politicians are going to do? I, I don't know, because it depends on, again, if people, if there is a reaction. Yeah. But most of the time there isn't, because most of the time people agree that this is... That this is that normal. It's, it's okay. We I'm not we don't judge being beaten and tortured. Yeah, so but that's they say fine. we don't judge how people want to raise their children, oh. which is extremely upsetting for me. Like yeah. it, it makes me feel devalued as a Canadian. So if that in, I'm not equal to other Canadians, other Canadian children will get support. Yeah, but not me because. I have darker skin. This is what this is to this is me, the reality of it. bigotry. Yeah, yeah. That's that's basically what they're saying. And one of my friends, uh, Shazia Hobbs, who wrote a book called *The Guri's Daughter*, in that she talks about the same thing happened to her in Scotland. Yeah. Where when she left her family and tried to run away, just like they had a a Muslim counselor speak to this girl. Yeah. For her, they had a same thing. Pakistani Muslim counselor speak to her. So of course, he took her back to her father's house again. Yeah. So they think when they're helping, they say, oh, these are Muslim girls, they need help. Let's get them Muslim counselors. No, that's what we're running away from. Yeah. Don't bring us Muslim counselors to support us back into the families that yeah. we're, we're trying to get away yeah. from, right? So they don't know how to do but it But what right. if a Canadian kid gets beaten up? Of course, then it's different. Then they'll get taken out of the home and their parents will get prosecuted. 